All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is going to be the first new edition of Ring Respect Radio along with Ring Respect Retro. I am Bobby Munson. And due to what's going on in this crazy world of ours right now, I am actually on the phone with my co-host, the man with the angelic voice, Papa Smokes. How are you doing this morning? Hey, I'm doing great, Munson. How are you doing? Doing excellent. Glad to hear you. you're doing good in amongst all the uh, chaos that's going out here in the world. Uh, how are you holding up there at home? Doing okay? I'm old, Munson. You know me. Uh, I like my solitude. I do watch more wrestling. And uh, yeah, I'm old. Not in isolation so far. That's perfect. Sounds good to hear. Well, anyway, here on uh, Ring Respect Radio today, we are going to be talking about a few things, especially the impact that uh, this whole COVID-19 has had on the wrestling community and on, uh, in particular, on Prairie Pro Wrestling, which we are both uh, known for as well, too. We're going to have a little bit of fun on the show as well today. We're going to pick five independent wrestlers for which we would love to see work in uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling as well, too. And then uh, we're also going to finish off with a little bit of Ring Respect Retro. We're going to be talking about uh, somebody that's been handpicked here by Papa Smokes, and I'll let him talk more about that when we get to that point in time. But before we kick off with the show here today, I just want to let everybody know to go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Turn on the notification bell as well, so you can know when we release new material right here on the newly dubbed Video Bros Network. So Papa Smokes, today we are going to be talking a little bit about the independent wrestling thing, in particular Prairie Pro Wrestling. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a review of the Prairie Pro Wrestling Four Rounds to the Crown show and tournament that is the championship title tournament that uh, we kicked off just recently uh, in right before all this chaos kind of took off. Uh, why don't you let the fans know a little bit of background of the Prairie Pro Wrestling Championship. Okay, well, what happened was we had a show, like you say, we just uh, barely snuck it in under the wire there, the uh, four rounds to the crown, the beginning of our championship tournament. Uh, the some self-isolation uh, principles had just just popped up and uh, and uh, we like I say we managed to run that show because they had capped the uh, attendance numbers at 250 and, and uh, you know for our venue we just barely snuck that amount of people in I thought the fans were awesome for showing up they wanted to have some fun they wanted to see their favorite wrestlers in action and, uh, yeah, we managed to get that in the first uh, eight matches of the uh, four rounds of the Crown Tournament. You and I were there uh, doing our video bro filming and such like that. And, uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of a little bit of a, of a review for that for the fans today. Definitely do. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the winners, uh, what their uh, strengths are going to be moving forward. So in order to do that, we need to uh, break down what matches we witnessed that night. Every singles match that took place at Four Rounds to the Crown was a first-round match in the Four Rounds to the Crown tournament to crown our first-ever champion. Uh, this uh, tournament of sorts is going to take place over the course of the year here and wind up with the championship match being a one-on-one -on -one encounter inside of a ladder match. So that's very exciting news for fans uh, once we get the opportunity to you know, flesh out the tournament a little bit further. But let's uh, go back to four rounds to the crown here, Papa Smokes, and we're going to start with the opening match of that night. Uh, two men that were very, very familiar with one another, Sheik Akbar, Shabazz, and Davey O'Doyle. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that match. Uh, who did you like in that match? Uh, what uh, did we see there? Uh, you know, we saw Sheik Akbar, Shabazz pull up the victory, albeit uh, due to some controversial foot-on-the-rope action that, uh, you know, shouldn't be any bit of a surprise to any fans familiar with Sheik's work as of late. So uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, well, Munson, you know that uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Sheik Shabazz. I find him to be one of the uh, biggest and uh, most prominent uh, characters in PPW wrestling. I, I looked at him to be a favorite in the four rounds of the crown tournament. He uh, ended up with a very tough match in the first round, uh, the first match of the card against Davey O'Doyle, um, two, two guys that are no strangers to each other. Uh, they, they've had their uh, run-ins both in PPW and across uh, Western Canada numerous times before. And you basically always know that it's going to be a strong, strong match between these two. Definitely was. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, despite knowing the skills of Sheik Akbar Shabazz and knowing that he definitely had the potential to win, I guess the big shock in this one is that Davey O'Doyle has had such a solid run with Prairie Pro Wrestling, completely undefeated in singles competition 
up until uh, just last month when he took on Mike McSugar, taking that loss there. I would have thought that he had a lot of momentum going into this tournament. He picked up the win in the Lethal Lottery Tournament back in July at Food Truck Wars. And coming up a bit short here, he underestimated Sheik Shabazz for a moment. Sheik Shabazz picked up the victory. It was very uh, shocking fashion, yet uh, what are uh, Sheik's attributes going forward? What can we expect to see from the Sheik in the next round of the tournament? Well, uh, yeah, like we never suspect uh, to see such a uh, favorite such as Davey O'Doyle go down in the first round, but of course, such is the nature of a tournament. Uh, you lose and you're out, so uh, Sheik uh, likes to bend the rule book a little bit here and there, and hey, if the referee doesn't see it, then maybe it didn't even happen, so uh, Sheik's always got that in his back pocket. He's uh, unscrupulous, he's uh, extremely focused on winning, and uh, as you know, as we've talked about in uh, commentary many times before, that the Sheik is a big, strong man. He's very driven. He's got an excellent move set, and uh, I, I like the Sheik's chances a lot going forward in this tournament. I have to agree with you there, Papa Smokes. I really do feel like Sheik is a strong asset to the tournament and going to be somebody to look out for coming up in the second round, although we do have a lot of great competitors in the second round. Let's uh, move on to the second match that we saw from Four Rounds to the Crown in uh, a relatively newcomer to the Saskatoon scene, uh, the Cheetah pair, Jude Dawkins, getting his opportunity in the Four Rounds to the Crown tournament as he took on a Saskatoon favor and a Saskatoon regular here, Uncle Phil Deadly. It was uh, quite the hell of a show and, you know, much to everybody's surprise, as much as they're loving the Cheetah Bear Jude Dawkins as of late, Uncle Phil Deadly pulling out the win in this one. Yeah, yeah, I, I was uh, just with everybody else in uh, being a little bit surprised by this. Uh, I have all the respect in the world as Phil De for Phil Deadly as a competitor, but uh, I mean, even just looking at the Cheetah Bear Jude Dawkins, you look at this guy and you just think, how could anyone beat this this maniac, this man beast? But uh, Phil, he's slick, he's got the moves, he's got the support of the fans behind him, and he pulled out a much-needed victory, and I think that's another... Uh, bright spot of tournaments like this is that uh, the favorite doesn't always win and and uh, and uh, Phil Deadly coming up with a somewhat of an upset victory in this match. And yet at the same time, Phil Deadly, you know, I mean, he is a seasoned veteran and everything, especially here in Saskatoon. And the one thing that the fans might not know about is the hard work and dedication that Phil Deadly puts in to honing his craft. He has spent some time in you know, multiple areas of the world, learning different styles of wrestling and everything like that. Uh, would you argue to say that maybe it's uh, all that hard work and dedication that finally paid off for Phil Deadly and got him the victory here? Uh, yeah, without question, without question. Uh, uh, never to sell uh, Uncle Phil short. He is skilled. He's a, he's a wrestling guy. If you talk to Phil Deadly, you know that he's watched and uh, soaked in all this wrestling culture his entire life and... Uh, yeah, it, maybe, maybe it shouldn't be a surprise that he's advancing along there. He is a wrestler's wrestler, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what he's got in store for us for uh, round two. Yeah, definitely. So uh, just to get a little bit off the uh, beaten path there with Phil Deadly uh, moving forward, uh, just the Cheetah Bear Jude Dawkins, uh, if anybody has not seen this guy just yet, they should probably head on over to our uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling YouTube channel, check out some of the uh, work that's been on display there so far. I believe Episode 2 of Prairie Pro Wrestling Revolution features the Cheetah Bear Jude Dawkins, and you can see the guy's entrance alone is a reason that the Saskatoon audience, the PPW Nation, is really talking about this guy right now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, when he first came to PPW, I wasn't overly familiar with his work, but after that, that first entrance and that first match, I, I, my hair was standing on end. Uh, uh, he, he's got an incredible presence. He's got an incredible look, and his skills inside the ring are, are, are quite top-notch. So uh, looking forward to seeing more of uh, the Cheetah Bear in the future, but uh, as for four rounds to the crown, He's out for now. He definitely is, but you know, congratulations to Phil Deadly, and looking forward to seeing who he will lock up with the in the second round. Uh, moving on from there, the third match of the night, uh, uh, also a relatively newcomer, came to us just recently in Prairie Pro Wrestling. Uh, all night, Levi Knight was there, taking part in the four rounds to the Crown tournament. But I mean. Talk about uh, having to face your worst nightmare in the first round of the four rounds of the crown tournament. He came up against a very, very angry and pissed off Jacob Creed. 
Yeah, yeah, that that's a horrible position for Levi Knight to be in. He had, a, like you say, an, an angry and a pissed off uh, cowboy to deal with. Uh, of course, Jacob Creed has been involved in this uh, feud with Michael Allen, Richard Clark, and uh, not really having his way in this feud. Uh, uh, he's obviously got a chip on his shoulder. And as we saw at four rounds to the crown, he came out to his match uh, uh, angry, driven, focused, and uh, it, it was not a long match. Uh, Levi Knight might have uh, got a couple of little offensive uh, moves going, but uh, Jacob Creed made pretty quick work of the newcomer. Definitely did. I'm sure we will see a lot more of Levi Knight in the future with PPW. Obviously, the PPW Nation, uh, big fans of the charisma and the... Uh, fun attitude of Levi Knight and also you know there is a lot of skill there when we saw him debut his first night he came out and proved a lot there I mean he didn't stand down one bit from Jacob Creed at the same time we're talking about a big seasoned veteran in Jacob Creed and with all the anger and frustration we saw with uh, him taking that you know that loss to Michael Allen Richard Clark just recently you know there 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 was no hope for very many people going in there against Jacob Creed in this opening round <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. Uh, he had some anger to uh, to uh, disperse amongst his next opponents, and uh, he did exactly that with Levi Knight and uh, Jacob Creed, a, a large, violent man. If if uh, if any opponents let him get any traction in the match whatsoever, or let him get his uh, wheels rolling, so to speak, yeah, it's pretty tough to come back on uh, the big uh, the big cowboy. Definitely so, and yeah, so Jacob Creed going to be moving on to the next round. Uh, do we feel like this guy should be all eyes on him? Like, is this one guy we're probably going to be seeing in the finals of this tournament and arguably maybe the first Prairie Pro Wrestling champion, in fact? Yeah, well, of course, anything's possible. As soon as you get past that first round, you're, you know, you're going into the playoffs of this tournament, so to speak. And, uh, I mean, we all saw what happened with Jacob Creed uh, uh, after his first uh, uh backstage brawl with uh, Michael Allen Richard Clark he, he was angry he was uh, he was violent and yelling and uh, he ended up getting fired from the company for a time there for uh, his insubordination and, and unprofessional conduct and uh, uh, we had him back because uh, there was unfinished business with Michael Allen Richard Clark and uh, it kind of looks like Jacob Creed's turned a corner from that to a certain extent he's now in this tournament and he obviously has his eyes on the gold, and uh, I think he's going to be a pretty uh, pretty tough freight train to derail on, on his way to the title. Very much so. Uh, moving on from there, the fourth match that we had of the evening, and what I would say everybody in the PPW Nation were talking about well through to the end of the night, this was the match. Michael Richard Blaze taking on Michael Allen Richard Clark. What most people would assume to be a final match in most tournaments was a first round matchup for us. Both these guys probably earmarked to be champions in this company and they took each other on in the first round. Let's uh, talk about this one for a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like we were talking about before, uh, the way a tournament gets set, set up with seedings and such like that, uh, you, you sometimes have the big matches in the first and second round. And obviously Michael Allen, Richard Clark versus uh, Michael Richard Blaze could be a, a main event anywhere in Canada. Uh, these two are awesome superstars. They're both very experienced. They're both huge uh, showmen in the ring, both tremendously skilled, and uh, what a treat for the Saskatoon audience to get to see this, especially in the first round of a tournament. And, uh, you know, the only shame about a match like that is that one guy's got to lose and, and is out of the tournament. Well, speaking about the shame of it in particular, uh, many of the fans feel maybe that they were robbed of a proper finish in this one because now we got to, you know, rewind back to the whole Jacob Creed, Michael Allen, Richard Clark situation because this match ended in controversy, Papa Smokes. Uh, Jacob Creed came down. He knocked Michael Richard Blaze off the top rope and... As as or sorry, Michael Allen Richard Clark off the top rope, and as a result, we saw Michael Allen Richard Clark pick up the victory by a disqualification. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, despite that, this is a brand new tournament starting. It's it's not like you can erase the past from this. Uh, uh, obviously, Jacob Creed and Michael Allen Richard Clark still have issues with each other. And uh, but the the question for me is that. 
did, did Creed come down and interfere in that match in order to try and, uh, uh, to try and, uh, you know, put, put a roadblock in front of uh, Michael Allen, Richard Clark, or did he do it in order that he wanted Clark to advance in this tournament so that he could get his hands on him in a second or third or fourth round match? This is the question in my mind. And, and the other question is what will happen if these two meet up again in the, in this tournament? Uh, I mean, their matches so far have been absolute brawls and uh, absolute just unrestrained action in the ring. So, uh, I mean, it just begs the question, will these two meet up later in the tournament and what's going to happen with that? Well, later in the tournament, I mean, if they make it all the way to the ladder match, that's no disqualifications. It's playing right into what these two seem to love about fighting with each other What right now, throwing out all the rules and everything. But what happens if they meet in round two or, say, round three, where all the rules still apply? And we have seen both these guys come out twice now to no contests. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you say, I, I, I know that some of the fans wanted to see a, a, a real... Uh, you know, a, a, a rules finish with a uh, with a uh, Blaze versus Clark. They didn't want to see a disqualification. They didn't want to see a count out or a no contest or something like that. And I mean, that's a that's a huge possibility of Creed and and Clark fight each other. So yeah, like you say, if they if they were to both make it to the final, then uh, yeah, it's a no disqualification match. I mean, this could be a this could be a huge classic. But both of them have to make it there first, and we'll see what happens with the seedings of uh, round two. Definitely so. So, uh, moving on from there, we've got four more matches to discuss. The next match that we had up came just shortly after the intermission at four rounds to the crown, and we got to see Mister Reeducation himself, the smartest man in professional wrestling, Bucky McGraw come on down and he was going to be taking on Mitch Danger Zone Clark but I guess before we start that let's paint the picture that Bucky McGraw has been saying over and over again with this whole re-education that he wants to shake people's hands he wants to you know basically take them down his path of truth and show them the way and he's finally had to take her Papa Smokes in the form of Merle Graves. Merle Graves coming out looking very uh, dapper compared to what we're used to seeing from Merle Graves and uh, also playing very, very, you know, crucial in this particular matchup against Mitch Danger Zone Clark. Yeah, absolutely. Just like Bucky McGraw always uh, plays it, he's, he's using his intellect, he's using his uh, extreme intelligence, and I think that, that can't be overstated more, that, that in getting his first follower with Earl Graves, having that extra influence on the outside, uh, an experienced uh, wrestler, following uh, his footsteps, following his golden path to re-education, staying on the outside, and then uh, interjecting himself in the action sometimes uh, to, to the betterment of Bucky McGraw's chances of winning. I mean, this this, this is going to help Bucky a lot in the further rounds of this tournament. And uh, I, his opponents, I suppose, will have to uh, will have to be aware that Graves is on the outside and that he might get involved in matches and uh, that's always a distraction to uh, any opponent there so it, it works in McGraw's advantage for sure. Oh definitely for sure and you know he used it to his advantage in this one. Uh, you gotta say a lot of the PPW Nation very very upset with the outcome here because they have really grown to love Mitch Danger's own Clark. He's become you know a huge impact here for Prairie Pro Wrestling and somebody that you know, I'm sure a lot of the fans wanted to and were expecting to see at least get past the first round or two here in this particular tournament because he has all the accolades there to go far in a tournament like this. But unfortunately, coming up short because Bucky had him outsmarted this time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I got to admit, I was also surprised. I, I had uh, Clark, uh, Mitch Clark earmarked in my mind to be to go far in this tournament he's a very skilled wrestler like you say he's got that mma background uh, he uses a lot of traditional grappling skills uh, to his advantage in wrestling matches but uh just like bucky mcgraw has been saying in some of his re-education videos he he said uh one of his mantras is to never give up a good deal and the way i look at that for four four rounds to the crown is that this is a good deal for every wrestler in PPW that's involved in this tournament. It's a it's a golden deal and it's a ticket to success. But you have to make you have to make your own victories out of this. So 
McGraw never going to turn down a good deal like this, and, and look what happens. He gets himself uh, passed in the first round, and he's he's looking good for uh, to go deep in this tournament. And looking good, not only looking good deep in the tournament, but, but what a turn of events for him. I mean, coming into PPW, I mean, he is right now probably one of our top guys looking at it. I mean, he's... Uh, one defeat uh, only in PPW so far. Otherwise, he's picked up nothing but victory. Something is clicking and working for Bucky McGraw so far in PPW. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, he's, uh, I think, changed his attitude a little bit. I think his golden path of re-education, and he's carrying around his re-education manual. He's got his uh, his head on straight. He's got his sights set. He's uh, he's looking towards that that. You know, not only the golden path, but he wants the golden belt around his waist, that beautiful PPW championship belt. But I, I suspect McGraw is going to stop at nothing to achieve that. Definitely. So, okay, moving on from there, the next match of the night was we saw uh, Jack Pride taking on Tony Novak. Jack Pride, uh, you know, we've had him out before for PPW once before. And this almost seemed like a different side of Jack Pride. It almost seemed like the other Jack Pride that we got here in this particular matchup. Not uh, seeming like he was interested in the accolades from the fans or anything like that. Instead, leaving those up to the always popular with the Saskatoon crowd, Tony Novak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you get Jack Pride in the ring, you, you have to wonder which Jack Pride is, is coming out. It seems like there's two, three, maybe even four uh, sides to his personality. He's got these uh, characters that, or these uh, these other identities that live inside of him and that seem to be quarreling all the time. I, I suspect sometimes that, it, that in some matches it confuses uh, Jack Pride a little bit. Um, these different voices arguing inside his head. Uh, as for uh, Tony Novak, I mean, he's uh, fairly new to the Saskatchewan uh, wrestling game, a couple of years in or whatever, but this kid constantly impresses me with his uh, hard work ethic. Uh, he's constantly uh, looking to the veterans to learn. He's trying to soak in the, all that wrestling knowledge. He's a, he's a, he practices and trains all the time. He loves the, the support of the fans, of which he gets a whole lot here in Saskatoon. And uh, uh, just based on his high-flying style and his uh, utter enthusiasm to win, I'm not surprised to see uh, Tony Novak go past uh, that first round match. I'm looking for more for, from him throughout this tournament. And uh, I think the sky's the limit uh, when you look at the potential of uh, Tony Novak. And we've noticed a lot of uh, really hard workers that we've known for quite some time made it through past the first round. Is it going to make for you know guys like Tony Novak having a very competitive road ahead of them in this tournament and stuff after this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we can't uh, predict who, who's going to be facing who in this in the next round of this tournament, but um, I, I, I think Novak's chances are awesome. I think uh, with the support of the fans behind him, um, yeah, like I say, he's got he's got unlimited potential. He's young, he's enthusiastic, he's a hard worker. He has a strong respect for the past and a, for the veterans of uh, the wrestling game and. Uh, that's a guy you got to watch. He'll put the one, two, three on you if you turn your back for one second. Definitely so. And speaking of uh, support of the fans, and that will segue well into our next match and what, you know, some people might find a very controversial finish. Others might just say, hey, this is how it is nowadays. El Asesino taking on Zoe Sager. And Zoe Sager, you know, not to everybody's, Surprise, or maybe to some people, surprise, I'm not sure. Zoe Sager picking up the win over the seasoned veteran El Asesino. Papa Smokes, run us through that one there. Yeah, yeah, you talk about uh, fans being surprised. Uh, no one was more surprised than me uh, at the outcome of this match. Uh, on the one hand, we've watched Zoe Sager uh, uh, have a completely undefeated run so far in the uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling, uh, dating back to Food Truck Wars. I mean, she came into this promotion like a whirlwind. And uh, and uh, she's also uh, not a huge veteran of wrestling. She's fairly new, but she's got that enthusiasm. She's got that hard work ethic, and uh, she's looking forward all the time. And, and uh, I just uh, I, I felt like as good as that is, that she might not be up to the task of a 
defeating a, a, a ring general like uh, El Asesino and a, 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 the Mexican devil himself. I mean, he's, he's willing to do anything to win and uh, he's underhanded in his tactics, uh, 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 not enjoyed by the crowd whatsoever uh, and, and completely not caring about that. I had it in my mind that Asesino was going to do anything to win that match and win that match to uh, advance in the four rounds of the crown tournament. And imagine my surprise, that's that's not how it went out at all. Well, would you would we argue to say that maybe El Asesino very much so underestimated the ability of Zoe Sager? Maybe he should have paid more attention to what she's been capable of doing in Prairie Pro Wrestling so far. He took his eyes on the, off the prize for that one second. And that's all it took, and Zoe Sager basically had El Asesino by a small package for the one, two, three. Yeah, I, I, I really hate to speculate about that. <clears throat> as as I know, uh, El Asesino as a wrestler, his uh, his match prep is is complete all the time. Like I, I never really think that he underestimates anybody, but I see what you mean by that. It's it's very tempting to think that maybe he did. Um, uh, maybe he looked on her as a, looked at her as a as a novice talent as as maybe someone that has good matches and can win but might might not be uh, a front runner for winning the championship and such like that. But uh, yeah, like, like I say, I'm sure uh, no one was more surprised than him when this happened. Uh, and just like you say, it only it's as quick as a hiccup. All it takes is one second and in the, into that small package. And he was surprised and he couldn't kick out. And, and yeah, uh, obviously one of the front runners to win this tournament is eliminated. Yeah, but speaking of front runners to win the tournament, is it now arguable that Zoe Sager must be considered one of the front runners being pretty much the only person in PPW that's undefeated in singles competition outside of Michael Allen, Richard Clark, Zoe Sager has to be at this point, no longer a surprise entry as opposed to a legitimate threat going forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, like we said that she's got an undefeated record so far here. Um, I kind of felt like, uh, once we got into, uh, some more matches that, that she might, uh, she might, even out the curve a little bit and uh, take a few losses here and there, but hey, I, I'm gladly uh, mistaken about that. And uh, I'll admit when I'm wrong, as she is now, especially after that victory over El Asesino, got to be looking like one of the front runners uh, in this competition because if she can put a pinfall, a clean pinfall win on El Asesino, then you got to believe she can beat anyone in this tournament. Well, not just him, but she's also got clean pinfall wins over, uh, you know, the likes of Mike McSugar and, you know, as well as Sheik Akbar Shabazz, just to name a couple as well, too, uh, from PPW. So, I mean, she's really looking for good moving forward. It's just uh, really going to depend who she draws in the next round of this tournament and how they uh, handle themselves in the matchup against her. <laughs> Yeah, I also think as the rounds uh, progress, uh, you know, just like the playoffs in any sports, it becomes more grueling. It becomes a bigger challenge to the body, bigger challenge to the mental state. And uh, I mean, you can't just win round one. You got to win four rounds to get there, and it's no joke. And it won't be easy for anyone that advances that far. But uh, like we say, I, I got to give Zoe Sager as good a chance as anybody else. And speaking of big things, we're moving on to the final match that we had from four rounds to the Crown Pop of Smokes. This one, Cannonball Kelly taking on who was dubbed that evening as the superior human, Mike McSugar. This one, a very interesting matchup. Mike McSugar coming out looking like he uh, was dressed to uh, keep his social distancing, but not a whole lot of social distancing that went on once that ring bell ran against uh, Cannonball Kelly, but uh, Mike McSugar picking up the win in this one. Let's uh, break that one down. What are your thoughts on this match? Yeah, well, I, anyone that knows Mike McSugar knows he's not big on social distancing, especially on the weekends in the clubs. But uh, that all that aside, uh, here's another match of two extremely experienced veterans, uh, two guys that are driven to win this uh, PPW championship. And, uh, I mean... Mike McSugar's come out also with a new attitude in past months. Uh, he's come out as a, as a controversial uh, identity. He's come out uh, uh, not craving the, the cheers of the fans so much these days. I mean, he's also uh, 
he's kind of put the rule book in his back pocket a little bit too. It's not like he's uh, overly worried about uh, what the referee has to say about anything. So uh, once again, that as huge of a star and a talent as Cannonball Kelly is, he, he was in tough against Mike McSugar. Uh, he, McSugar also has momentum in this company. Uh, he's now got momentum in this tournament. And, and once again, this is a guy in my mind that's got to be one of the favorites to win four rounds to the crown. Yeah, I think when uh, PPW started, if we were to examine kind of who was at the beginning, you know, Mike McSugar is always going to be somebody that we're going to think that has the potential to get there and stuff like that. I mean, we've known him for a long time. There's a lot of great skill, a lot of great wrestling ability that Mike McSugar possesses. But this new attitude in general, I mean, it is something else. I mean, it not only is it unique and interesting to see what Mike McSugar's doing, but the fact that he's using it more than ever now to get under the skin of his opponents and successfully getting under the skin of his opponents in the process too. We have seen a, a whole new life for Mike McSugar. And now I got to say, despite the crop of talent that's still left in this tournament, Mike McSugar might be able to find a way to make it all the way to the finals of this one. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're completely right about that. And uh, uh, I know that the fans uh, fans in the crowd have, have watched uh, Mike McSugar in, in, in Saskatchewan and Saskatoon for a long time. He's he's had a number of different uh, incarnations, uh, uh, and uh, some of them being uh, on, on one side of the fans and some of them being on the other. But uh, one thing you can't question ever about Mike McSugar is the skill that the guy's got in the ring. Uh, despite any of his uh, any of his attitudes or any of his uh, identity crises or whatever you think he might be having, there is uh, he's he's held gold at every level of uh, professional wrestling in in Saskatchewan, and uh, I, I think that experience will uh, serve him well in the later reign later rounds of this tournament, pardon me, and uh, I think that he's been there before, he's held uh, tag team gold, singles gold, uh, all over uh, Saskatchewan and Western Canada, and I believe that's a guy that his opponent should fear. He knows how to get there, he knows how to win a belt, he knows how to defend a belt, and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see him as anything but a favorite going forward. I have to agree with you. And so that was the uh, first round matches from first uh, four rounds to the crown. Uh, the second round matches uh, due to take place at our next Prairie Pro Wrestling show, uh, which was scheduled for May the 2nd. And I say was lightly. Uh, it's not that anything has officially been canceled or changed at the moment here, Papa Smoke, so we don't want to jump the gun. But with everything going on currently with COVID-19, everything is kind of completely uncertain at the moment about whether or not gatherings will be allowed to even happen at that time. So we're just kind of playing it by ear right now to kind of see what happens. But I mean, despite that, once this whole COVID-19 thing starts to lift and we can get back to some normalcy here in the world, we're definitely going to be moving forward with this tournament as soon as possible, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. And uh, like you say, a lot of things in our world right now are a question mark, especially uh, concerning time and, and when uh, public gatherings might be uh, permitted to uh, to uh, take place again. Uh, uh, of course, we all have to remain safe, and we have to uh, we have to abide by our health officials and uh, and flatten the curve of this disease that's going around. But uh, yeah, uh, have no doubt that, uh, that this tournament will continue. Uh, all of uh, wrestling and PPW will continue, and uh, whenever we have the next show, whether it's it actually is a May second or if it has to be postponed from then. Uh, you will be seeing round two, three, and four of this tournament in the coming months in Saskatoon. Definitely. So, and in the meantime, though, uh, because, you know, everything kind of puts everything on a little bit of a back burner, uh, at Prairie Pro Wrestling, if you head on over to our YouTube channel, I'll put a uh, link in the descriptions down below, but head on over to Prairie Pro Wrestling. At the moment, we have been releasing uh, singles matches from a previous tournament, the Lethal Lottery Tournament that took place at Food Truck Wars back in the summer. Uh, those are being provided right now uh, as something to just kind of give a little bit of a boost of entertainment for everybody who's kind of trapped indoors at the moment with nothing really to go by because you know, just about everything in wrestling has been put on hold at the moment. So we're doing our best at Prairie Pro Wrestling to provide you as much entertainment as possible, just like we're trying to do right here on the Video Bros Network as well, too. So 
Speaking on PPW, we're going to keep on that topic, pop of smokes, and move on to the next aspect of the uh, show here today, where we decided we were going to pick five independent workers that aren't signed to, say, WWE or AEW at the moment. Five individuals that we know are working out there in the wrestling profession that we personally would love to see have a match or even have multiple matches within Prairie Pro Wrestling. So we're going to start off, I'm going to let you read off your very first selection and give uh, the fans a little bit of a rundown of why you would pick this particular individual. And then we'll go back and forth like that. I'll pick my, and then we'll just go back and forth until we're all through each of our five lists here. So, Yeah, sure. Sounds good to me, Munson. Uh, when I uh, started thinking about my list here, uh, I knew there was uh, a couple of wrestlers uh, from the Canadian scene that, that were kind of more uh possible picks uh in by possible i mean that uh there's a good chance of of signing them and having them on the show on on uh appear on some of our shows here there's a couple uh that are also kind of like on my santa's wish list kind of thing i'm not sure if we'll be able to procure them but hey we're just having some fun here and uh and get some ideas out there so uh yeah uh i'll go th through the first uh, member of my list right here and that is winnipeg's own leo london um i picked him because uh, i've seen him perform live a few times in saskatoon in the past i like this guy i like his skill set um i like the way he uh uses old school grappling uh carl gotch style grappling in, in his matches i like his uh, gentleman's club uh, that he has going over in Winnipeg there with his uh, with his brothers and the tag team and such like that, and uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's a great talent in the ring. He's good at uh, promoting himself online as a good wrestler, and uh, I would love to see uh, Leo London come and perform for PPW for the first time. Um, I I think he I think he resides in Regina now, so once again, it's quite possible that. We could make this deal. I know some talk has been done uh, in the background of uh, PPW promotions and such like that. So uh, this is one I'm keeping my fingers crossed for. I'd like to see the chap, Leo London, appear in the PPW ring. Definitely an excellent choice. When I saw that one come up on your list, I had to fully agree with you. It's one that I would definitely pick as well too but I tried to keep my pick separate so that we'd have 10 different people to talk about here today so uh, I'm going to go with my first selection another one that's performed here in Saskatoon before but we haven't seen in a Prairie Pro Wrestling ring and would bring you know a lot more danger to the uh, roster and stuff like that I'm going to go with Bobby Sharp actually I think that this is somebody that uh, could add a lot of you know, great skill inside the Prairie Pro Wrestling ring. And you know that uh, his dirty tactics, he'll do anything to pick up a victory and stuff like that. So you really keep a lot of the, you know, the babyface characters right on their toes when he uh, steps in a ring in Prairie Pro Wrestling. And I think it's very possible down the road that we could see something like that possibly take place as well too. So Bobby Sharp was my very first selection here on my list. Yeah, I like this pick a lot, Munson. I think that's a strong one. Uh, uh, Bobby Sharp was going through my mind, too. Uh, another one of the favorite uh, villain characters we've seen in uh, Saskatoon in the past. Uh, the guy's a complete uh, wrestling machine. He's, he's got the body, he's got the look, he's got the mind. and but He's an absolute jerk in his attitude a lot of the time, and uh, the fans love to jeer him. They love to hate him. Um, I think that's an absolutely fine pick and, and also a, a possibility of, of getting him realistically in the future for some PPW matches. I, I, I'm right behind that pick. Perfect. Yeah. So, okay. So moving on to pick number two, what, uh, what do you got for us, Papa Smokes? All right. Munson, number two I got is Zicky Dice. Now, uh, for any fans who aren't familiar with his name, Zicky Dice has been an independent star for a number of years now, but... Uh, came to more national prominence uh, with his uh, competition in the NWA. He's currently the NWA TV champion. Uh, he's got an outlandish gimmick and uh, or an outlandish look and appearance to his character. I think he's, uh, he's really doing a great job of promoting himself. I think his ring skills are quite good. I, I like him because his character is a little bit of a throwback to the... Uh, dyed blonde hair guys of the 80s and 70s uh, i really think it's a classic look and a classic uh, 
attitude to have for one of these uh, jerks that doesn't care what the fans think, uh, doesn't doesn't care about anything. He's got his sixty four thousand uh, dollar fanny pack on, and uh, I, I like him a lot as a character. It's a throwback for me, and uh, to have him uh, perform at a show for PBW would be a quite a thrill for me. I gotta say, I think that's an excellent pick there, Papa Smokes. Definitely. Zicky Dice and PPW, maybe we'll, one day with any luck we'll may, we'll may make something happen. So I'm going to go with uh, my next pick here, second on my list. Not sure if you're familiar with this particular individual, but Jamie Tagatasi out of New Zealand. Uh, works for IPW New Zealand. He is the champion there. Has been holding that title for now around three on the 300 day mark and is currently 794 days undefeated. But this guy wow. is a big, large Samoan individual bulldozes his opponents and i really think his power his strength and his in-ring presence would bring a lot to the table for prairie pro wrestling uh this is going to be probably one of my dream picks i'm not too sure how easy getting somebody over from new zealand would be even once all the covid19 stuff finally lifts here but jamie tagatasi if you haven't checked him out definitely check out some of this guy's work he's fairly new to the wrestling scene but this guy is going to be a massive star, and it would be a pleasure to be able to have him work for us in PPW. Well, I like that pick, Bunsen. Uh, I, I know the guy you're talking about. I haven't watched much of his stuff, but I, I think I will now. Um, and I know that you're uh, knowledgeable about the about the uh, New Zealand uh, scene down there from some of the writing you've done online and stuff. Uh, I, I'm interested to know more about that scene. I just haven't watched that much yet. Uh, so I, I love your pick, and uh, I'm going to check out some of this stuff. Definitely, you should. Uh, going on to pick number three, what do you got for us? Okay, well, we might as well stay uh, down under on the, uh, the far side of the world there. I, I've got an Australian lady star that I, that I think is really quite an excellent performer is uh, Steph DeLander. Um, she wrestles out of Melbourne, Australia. I watch some of her stuff online. I think she's, uh, I think she kind of personifies the new, the, the real new aesthetic of the new uh, ladies wrestling uh, kind of scene and division worldwide she's a very big very strong woman uh, trains a lot she's got a big muscular physique and uh, a real bad attitude she wants to win she's held a whole bunch of gold across uh, Australia and uh, yeah frankly I, I think that's where uh, ladies wrestling is going more these days towards a more legitimate kind of uh, competitor status instead of uh, you know, we've all seen some of the divas here and such like that on TV where they got lingerie models basically to uh, try to teach wrestling to. No, this Steph DeLander is not that at all. She's uh, she's born to be a wrestler. She's trained extremely, extremely hard. Uh, she's uh, She's been uh, linked with Indy Hartwell, who is a, who was a fellow indie star but has been signed to NXT and... Uh, I expect big things from Steph DeLander as well. So, uh, again, kind of a wish list pick uh, as she's from uh, all the way across the world in Australia. But uh, if we get to pick whoever we want, uh, Steph DeLander is one of my picks. See, and you know what? When I saw you that come up on your list as well, too, Papa Smokes, I'm glad it did because I would have probably put Steph DeLander on my top five as well, too, had you not picked her already. Uh, very, very familiar with her work as I've done the writing in Austra for Australia promotions and New Zealand promotions. Yeah. So I know exactly who you're talking about. You know, I know about Indy Hartwell and her matches there as well, too, the gold that uh, both those women have carried. But, yeah, Steph DeLander is definitely you know, a top pick because, I mean, she's going to go places. Uh, if somebody doesn't react soon, it's going to be, you know, signings by either AEW or NXT uh, before long for this young lady. For sure. So Yeah, yeah, I could see that easily. Okay, so anyways, next up on my list, uh, keeping on uh, lady wrestlers right now, I'm going to have to go with another one that's uh, familiar to the Saskatoon scene from a long time ago, but haven't been seen around here for a long time. I think we need to bring back Giselle Shaw, uh, somebody who's gone and crafted her art around the world and stuff like that, who, uh, you know, was excellent on the Saskatoon scene many years ago and stuff like that. And I think that she would be welcomed back with open arms into the Saskatoon scene here in wrestling, especially now with the amount of skill that she's possessed uh, honing her craft uh, elsewhere around the world right now. 
Yeah, I, I got to agree with you on that pick. Uh, Giselle Shaw was someone that uh, was a high pick in my mind, too. Uh, I've watched many of her matches uh, live in Saskatoon, and uh, she's come a long way. She's uh, she's she's honed her craft. She's uh, built her look. She's built her attitude. She's uh, She's been touring all around uh, Canada and the U.S., so uh, she's really trying to make a go of it and, and doing quite well at that, too. She's... Uh, had some matches on TV now involved with uh, Impact Wrestling, and uh, and uh, I, I think her star is, is ready to shine even brighter than it has uh, in the past, and, and I agree with that. I would love to get Giselle back in uh, Saskatoon for a few matches. Can you imagine Giselle Shaw versus uh, Zoe Sager? I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. Well, I think we need to hop on that opportunity well before our uh, counterparts in uh, Alberta start to make that happen. So. But yeah, definitely. Giselle Shaw in a PPW ring, I think, would be excellent. Uh, she'd be welcome back with open arms here to the PPW Nation, and I think would be a great addition to our roster for sure. So, moving on from there, what do you got for pick number four there? Okay, pick number four for Papa Smokes is going to be uh, another Winnipeg product uh, known as Canadian Hercules Tyler Colton. Um, this is a guy that's making a big splash uh, all across Canada. Uh, he's doing tours in uh, Europe and in China and in the States. Uh, uh, he's, uh, I've seen him uh, perform and wrestle live in Saskatoon many times in the past uh, for various promotions. I just like the way this guy uh, uh, does his stuff. He's, he's a huge... Uh, He's a huge man, uh, very, very strong, does the strongman competitions, uh, lifting insane amounts of weight. And then in the ring, yeah, he doesn't even uh, flex his character that much or anything like that. It's basically him. Um, he's he's uh, He plays it on the villain side of things a little bit because he doesn't have any time or any care for what the fans think or what promoters think or what his fellow wrestlers think. He just wants to win and he wants to make a name for himself and he doesn't care who he steps on uh, in his way to get there. Uh, I'd love to see Tyler Colton back uh, in Saskatchewan in the PPW ring. Definitely so and I think that's an excellent choice there Papa Smokes. I would love to see Tyler Colton's work uh, inside a PPW ring. I've uh, checked out a little bit of his work and everything like that and I mean this guy is the right fit for what we have going on here in PPW. I think that he'd be excellent here and I think the fans would really enjoy watching some encounters that Tyler Colton could have with the PPW roster. Yeah totally agreed. All right, so my fourth pick, I'm going to have to go back to New Zealand, another person that I'm very, very big fan of. Uh, he is the shooter Saint, Shane Sinclair. He's the current SBW New Zealand champion. Uh, it's his second run with the championship. He won this one back in October. He's been having some excellent, excellent matches. Great technical worker. Uh, great in-ring uh, look to this guy. Uh, he's got a great presence. Everything about him screams current wrestling superstar i think that he'd be a great fit on our particular roster with the crop of wrestlers that we have going on there shooter saint shane sinclair is definitely someone i would love to get in a ppw ring well that's that's great bunson i uh, i love that you uh, have this knowledge of uh, new zealand and, and uh it, it makes me curious to watch more matches and and, and check out more superstars from the uh, various federations down there uh and I think it would be awesome if, if somehow we could create talent or uh, or host a little tour for some of these guys. I, I know you're uh, on a somewhat personal level with a few of these guys. You know some of these dudes. And, uh, geez, I'd love to make it happen. Wouldn't that bring some uh, international flavor to Prairie Pro Wrestling to have some, uh, some Kiwis, some New Zealanders come up to uh, Canada and uh, do a tour and have some matches. Uh, I highly uh, approve of your idea. I think it's a very untapped market in professional wrestling right now. A lot of talent out there. And uh, hopefully some of them are listening into the show right now as well, too. We'll make sure to tag them in on social media so that hopefully they catch the show. And maybe uh, we'll pick up some fans of our own out there in New Zealand as well, Papa Smokes. Maybe one day we'll be asking us to come and uh, head into a uh, New Zealand wrestling ring for uh, a little bit of the Papa Bobby commentary fun. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't that be awesome, Munson? And I'd be totally down for that. Yeah, well, let's make her happen. All right, now for our final picks. Who is your uh, last pick of the night here, Papa Smokes, for this one? Okay, Munson, I picked the biggest one for last. This is uh, 
this is a wish list pick for sure. Although I think this gentleman may have done some shows in the, in the Western Canada area in the next little while. And I, I think, I also think if we were to get him or feature him, we better do it quickly. This is another one. Uh, this, this talent is, is far too large to be uh, contained from the major companies for long. But uh, I'm talking about the, the meat castle himself, Alexander Hammerstone. This guy uh, currently performing for MLW Wrestling. Uh, he absolutely looks the part of a wrestler. He's, a, he's got this unbelievable bodybuilding physique. He's got, his look is tremendous. He, he looks like he should have been Thor in the Marvel movies. I mean, he looks like some kind of a Nordic god. And he's just, he's got a bad attitude and he's got a real chip on his shoulder and uh, he figures he's better than everybody else. I just love this kind of throwback character to uh, some of the, some of the uh, 80s promotions in the, in, in the U.S. And uh, I think Alexander Hammerstone, just his, uh, his work ethic and his his complete uh, uh, character is is just just pure gold in wrestling right now. And then to to get a guy of that stature for a, a local uh, Saskatoon show for PPW would just be a, a huge boon for the company and, and a, a huge pleasure for me personally to watch. I agree with you, and a very very excellent selection that you have there. And couldn't agree with you more. I think, uh, you know, if any, nobody acts soon, then Alexander Hammerstone, Hammerstone will be signed to a major contract here before long. This guy's got all the tools that it takes to be there, but it would be great to see him in a PPW ring, at least if nothing else, one time in a PPW ring, one good solid match that we could say that we were there and got to witness. So excellent choice, Papa Smokes. So last but not least, oh, sorry, keep Gary on there. Oh, no, I was just going to say maybe if we can get uh, PPW management to open up the uh, wallet strings a little bit, maybe we can make some of these happen. Yeah, exactly. We'll just have to uh, put in the good word there anyway. So, But speaking of a dream one, that's uh, kind of what I picked for my last one. And part of the reason is, too, is because this guy is kind of, I guess, somewhat signed. I, I don't know how much we would consider Ring of Honor to be considered a major signing anymore these days in the wrestling world. I know they're kind of up there, but... I would still kind of consider them to be a bit independent because a lot of their workers are on an open contract, capable of still uh, working for other places. So that's why I kept this guy on my list. I'm talking about Australian wrestler Slex the Business. This guy carries himself excellently in the ring. I mean, he just got the look of a current professional wrestler. He's got the talk. He's got the walk. He's got it all. This guy's got all the tools to become a, you know, a top player for any company in particular. But I think that his... Uh, sense of work and at his presence would just be an excellent fit to a Prairie Pro Wrestling ring. Well, that's awesome, Munson. I, I know you're talking about again the business and look at uh, look at the way that this is. We've been discussing before. Here's an Australian star that's made the step to come over to North America to apply his trade for bigger audiences, for bigger payouts and uh, more opportunities. Then, yeah, this is the kind of guy that we'd love to get for a visit up here. Um, and, and I hope that trend continues of, of some of those Australian and, uh, and uh, New Zealand uh, wrestlers coming up here. And uh, I realize it's a long, expensive trip and all that. But uh, if you can get some exposure, get a tour out of it, get, get a few payoffs, um, then you're all good. And, and obviously the business uh, uh, must, be a, must have uh, quite a lot of skill to be signed with, with ROH for now. But uh, We've had ROH visitors in Saskatoon before, including uh, Jeff Cobb, and uh, I think it's uh, eminently possible that uh, we could get a great talent like that. Even if it's for one night, it would be a thrill. It would definitely be a thrill, so hopefully we can make that happen, or make any of these happen. I think that both the uh, selections, all 10 of these wrestlers, would be great additions to a PPW ring. So, but anyway, we're going to segue off of that here into our final thing of the night here, Papa Smokes, and the part that... You know, you're going to carry the ball on this one a little bit more. This is definitely your cup of tea. We're talking about Ring Respect Retro. It's time to rewind back to the past and find out a little bit about somebody in the history of professional wrestling that has made this, you know, whole professional wrestling industry something else. Uh, why don't you tell the fans about who you've selected here today and uh, just uh, tell them a lot about this individual. Yeah, for sure. This is uh, the part of uh, Ring Respect Retro that that uh, Bobby Munson is nice enough to let me kind of uh, steer the ship a little bit. And uh, 
I everybody everybody that knows Papa Smokes knows that I love the uh, the vintage and retro wrestling action, and uh, sometimes it's a bit of a shame that uh, uh, some of these stars only come to mind to discuss uh, uh, once they've passed away. But in fact, uh, uh, it's better than not at all, right? And we had a a major star from the past uh, pass away at the end of January. Uh, Pampero Furpo is uh, was a major star in wrestling all across uh, Mexico, the U.S., and areas of Canada, too, in the 60s, 70s, and maybe a little bit in the early 80s. And uh, I've been, uh, since his death, uh, his he has a daughter named Mary who's been running his social media accounts, and and, uh, and Mary's dad, Pampero Furpo, was a, a, a pack rat of collecting all his... Uh, all his clippings, all his uh, programs, all the pictures, and uh, various uh, kinds of memorabilia that uh, he came across during his career as a wrestler. And uh, so he's been releasing a lot of this classic stuff, including TV clips and audio clips, pictures, programs, all from the past. And uh, of course, with those uh, primary source materials, uh, it, it makes it... Uh, much easier to get a sense of uh, what, what the uh, what the star was like in his day. I know I watched Vampiro Furbo on TV when I was a little kid in the uh, AWA uh, Minneapolis pro uh, promotion, working for Vern Gagne. And uh, any <clears throat> to anyone that's unfamiliar with Vampiro Furbo, he's uh, one of the among the first uh, wrestlers to use this sort of. Uh, he was a he was a wild man. I mean, he had that he had a, he had crazy afro black hair, a giant beard. He was hairy all over, and he was basically kind of a wild man character. Uh, he had a gravelly, shouting voice, and uh, and he, he he his wrestling style was very very uh, uninhibited. A uh, lot of eye raking and back scratching and uh, biting, and then some good bloody brawls that he had. Uh, he he feuded with many many uh, famous wrestlers of his day, including uh, Bruno Sammartino and including uh, uh, Johnny Valiant and uh, and uh, the Destroyer. And uh, he did tours in uh, Japan against uh, Giant Baba and Riki Dozan, a whole lot of the uh, famous famous performers of his time. And uh, just with, with his death uh, recently, he was he was 90 years old. And all this memorabilia that's been coming out, we've just really got a good close look at at, at his career and the kind of man he was, the kind of wrestler he was, uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, really kind of a archetype for that wild man character that was uh, later used by many many wrestlers, including uh, Bruiser Brody and uh, and Randy Savage and a few others uh, of note. And uh, I I really wanted to uh, pay tribute to to the wild bull of the Pampas, as he was known. He was an Argentinian wrestler, and uh, I would argue probably the, the most famous uh, wrestler from South America ever in the pro ranks. So, uh, yeah, the passing of Pampero Furbo, a uh, great time to talk about him and his legacy in wrestling. Yeah, definitely, and, you know, I uh, went and did some uh, research as well, checking into uh, Pampera Furpo. Uh, not somebody I would have been familiar with uh, from my childhood, but I've gone back and watched some stuff and checked into some stuff. And also, uh, you, I know you noted that uh, the influence on certain wrestlers and the wild man characters. Uh, also should note that Macho Man Randy Savage's uh, promos, in fact, the ooh yeah that we're so used to from Macho Man Randy Savage was actually influenced by Pampiro Furpo, who he co uh, coined that in his pr uh, promos well before Randy Savage did. Yeah, influence is a pretty nice way to say it. Uh, he pretty much uh, borrowed that one completely from uh, Furpo. As we know, if we look back on Furpo's life, he uh, he worked he worked a lot in the southern uh, states for uh, the Poffo family, uh, Angelo Poffo, the promoter, and then, of course, Randy and Lanny, the two brothers, uh, was great friends with them, was... Uh, was a, a somewhat a mentor to them as a wrestler and uh, yeah yeah I mean that's probably one of his big claim to fame claims to fame now is, is that ooh yeah which uh, <laughs> Macho Man obviously brought to uh, even greater heights than it had been before yeah and uh, what a lot of people don't know too is that uh, Randy Savage actually claimed to be struggling 
in the uh, in doing promos and stuff. You know, he had the in-ring down, but he couldn't quite grasp the promo side of it, wasn't confident in it. And his uh, brother Larry is the one who said that it was uh, basically the influence of Pampiro Furpo that got Randy Savage to get to being that classic uh, promo taker that we've seen over the years and that, you know, so many fans are very familiar with from Randy Savage himself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, another thing about Furpo, uh, when you look back upon his career, is that, uh, yeah, he came from very humble beginnings back in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And, and, yeah, he basically had to work and kick and scratch his way out of uh, out of a poverty uh, situation way down in South America there. And his dad had been a boxer and a boxing promoter, so, so the athletic side of life came naturally to to young Pampero but uh, yeah he kicked and scratched his way uh, out of out of uh, Argentina and made his way up to Mexico which of course has a much more thriving wrestling scene than uh, other places in South America he made his uh, he, he got his chops uh, in Mexico too and then came up to Houston as you remember on previous episodes of uh, Ring Respect Retro we've We've uh, commentated a bunch of those old Houston matches from the 70s and 80s. What a what a thriving scene they had going on there. And once he got noticed from there, he was uh, he was getting booked all over the country, including uh, Los Angeles with such uh, stars as Fred Blassie and John Tolos. Uh, out in Hawaii, he was uh, known as the Missing Link, and he was a hugely hugely popular and famous wrestler in Hawaii. And also, uh, he was booked by Vince McMahon Sr. in the old WWF and had title matches against uh, Bruno Sammartino and Buddy Rogers, and then also uh, was playing such huge uh, venues such as Madison Square Garden back in the day. So, uh, Furpo, uh, even though he's not remembered as well in, in the 2000s era, uh, actually was a quite a big star for the time and uh, really put his name on the map. I think a lot of people would also uh, recognize his picture if they saw him because he's unforgettable in his appearance and a very, very popular star. Oh, definitely. And one more thing we should note about Pampiro Furpo is he's also uh, often known as one of the pioneers of hardcore wrestling. So what we know of hardcore wrestling today uh, probably uh, started with the guys like this and what they were doing inside the squared circle uh, back a long time ago before uh, what we see today with hardcore wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, did you watch on YouTube months in the uh, clip of him bending that steel bar in his mouth? Uh, that, that's some of the biggest feats of strength and athleticism were, were quite good too. I think that's, I think that's sadly missing in uh, today's game. The, uh, the old, uh, displays of feats of strength that uh, wrestlers used to do on their TV shows and uh, Furbo being one of them bending the, the thick steel bar uh, with both hands and then the middle of it in his mouth and if you haven't seen that check it out on YouTube it's quite uh, captivating. I definitely saw it on there but I'll see if I can also put a link to that in the uh, description down below for the fans here to check that out and I'll see uh, if I can link a few more things from uh, Pampiro Furpo into the uh, description down below as well too so that people can become more familiar with him because you know he should be remembered for more than just his passing he was a great legend to professional wrestling and a huge influence on what we know wrestling to be today uh, definitely a great loss to the wrestling industry in my opinion yeah absolutely and, and uh, with uh, Ring Respect Retro and, and with Myself, Bob of Smokes, I, I, I feel like one of my uh, duties in, in the wrestling world is to help uh, educate the younger fans to some of the great stuff that's gone on in the past that I, I really would think it would be a shame if it was forgotten. I, I know the, the uh, older folks and the wrestling historians know about uh, some of these wrestlers from the past, but the common uh, TV watching fans uh, maybe don't know about some of these guys. So if, if you listen to our podcast and, and you like uh, this content, uh, I highly recommend checking out some of these uh, wrestlers from the past that we've uh, talked about. And uh, first and foremost with those would have to be Pampero Furpo. Definitely agree with you there, Papa Smokes. 
And you know what? Fans should definitely check out uh, any of the legends that you're going to be talking about on Ring Respect Retro here on the show. And also check out any of the independent stars that we talk about throughout the show on the Ring Respect radio side as well, too. But that's going to uh, segue us into uh, wrapping up here today, Papa Smokes. We're going to call it a day on this particular podcast and we're going to keep these podcasts going as often as possible especially while you know trying to build some extra entertainment for all those people stuck at home right now uh, bunkering down amid the uh, COVID-19 scare. I want to thank you for joining me here on the phone today Papa Smokes uh, definitely has been a slice and hopefully everybody enjoyed this edition of Ring Respect Radio and Ring Respect Retro. Uh, hopefully you're staying safe keep care out there I uh, hope your loved ones are safe from both myself and Papa Smokes. Thank you very much, and we look forward to you joining us next time here on the Video Bros Network.